This is FP3, June 2012, question 7, which is a vectors question. So FP3, June 12, question 7. Now the first thing I did when I started this question was to sketch out all my uh, three points. It says respect to the origin O, the position vectors points U, V and W are U, V and W respectively. So let's sketch in these vectors. So I've got a vector U here out to a point capital U and a vector V out to a point here capital V and then a vector W here out to another point capital W. And then um, it says the midpoints of the sides V, W, W, U, and U, V of the triangle U, V, W, M, N, P, respectively. So let's draw in our triangle here so that we can see what's going on and get these labeled carefully. So uh, the midpoints of the sides V, W is M, so V, W is M, so the midpoint there is M. Uh, w, U is N, so the midpoint there is N, and UV is P, so the midpoint there is P. And the first question it asks us to show is uh, show that uh, UM is equal to a half of V plus W minus 2U. So, first thing to think about is the fact that uh, UM, so to get from U to M here means I've got to go from U to V and then halfway along VW because M is the midpoint. So that's going to be UV plus a half of VW. So I'm going to write that in terms of my little vectors then. So uh, from U to V there, is going to be minus u plus v, put that origin in there, so that's going to be v minus u, and then a half of, now vw is minus v plus w, so that's w minus v. And simplify that a little bit, and we end up with uh, a half v plus a half w minus u take out a factor of a half and I end up with a half of V plus W minus 2U, which is what I was supposed to, to show. So that's that first bit done. Not too bad, uh, but I'm afraid it's going to get worse. So the next one, part two of this question, it says verify that the point G with position vector of third U plus V plus W lies on UM, and deduce that the lines UM, VN and WP intersect at G. Now this is a very uh, common little problem and there's a proof of this given in the C4 book and we're really we're looking for the vector position of the centroid of the triangle, that's what's actually in the back of the mind of the examiner here, but that's not strictly what they're asking us to do at this point. So um, we've got that G OG equals a third of U plus V plus W. Now it's verified, uh, not proved, so we're just going to test if this actually works. Now, um, and we want to know that this actually lies on UM. So, now my position vector of M itself uh, is... So O M, that position vector is going to be O U plus U M. And um, O U is U, so that's going to equal U plus, and we've just discovered that U M here is this expression here, half of V plus W minus 2U. So I'm going to use that in this solution. And we get U plus a half V plus W minus 2U here, which is going to simplify out to a half 
of v plus w. As we cancel various things, u basically minus half of 2u just leaves me with that. Now, um, so if we actually compare that with our expression here for g, uh, we can see that um, if that is m and that's g, then um, our expression for og, which is equal to a third of u plus v plus w, is equal to a third of that u plus, um, now, a third of v plus w here is two thirds of that. So take a moment to get your head around that. So one third of v plus w is, so one third is two thirds of a half, isn't it? So that third of v plus w is two thirds of half of v plus w. So it's um, two thirds of um, OM. which we can write in a uh, slightly different way and say that um, it's equal to, if we s say that the vector from OM, so if we said that OM equals little m, it's a bit easier to see it this way, we have a third m plus, a third u, sorry, plus two thirds m written like that. Now, any vector, any position vector, that built up a part of one position vector and part of the other means that the actual position must lie part way between these two. Uh, it's a bit like the midpoint or the, of uh, a vector between A and B is half of A plus a half of B. And so what this is saying is that a G must lie somewhere between uh, U and M. So it's on this line from U down to M because it's a part of u and a part of m. And in fact, what it's saying is that it's two thirds of the way along um. So we can deduce from this that g lies two thirds of, g lies two thirds of the way along u m in d. Now, um, it then asks us to um, deduce that line. So we verified that uh, G lies on UM, but the next step is to uh, deduce that uh, the, all the equivalent lines UM, VN, and WP intersect at G. Now, let's have a quick write down what we know at the moment. So we know we've got this uh, OM is equal to half of v plus w minus 2u. And so we can write down equivalence for uh, op. That's going to be a half of u plus v minus 2w, just by the symmetry of the situation. And on is a half of u plus w minus 2v, just by we could do exactly the same work as we did earlier in a slightly different situation and get these equivalent expressions. Meanwhile, our vector OG is a third of U plus V plus W. Now, given that this is completely symmetrical, it's just a third of each of these, um, we could do exactly the same work as we did earlier for any of these three and discover that G lay on the line um, between uh, the equivalents, you know, they lay on UV or UM, sorry, they, they lie on um, UM, VN, or WP just by symmetry. And a similar argument is made in the C4 book to show exactly this that uh, the, the medians, as they're called, intersect at the centroid. And so by saying this, we can say at this point, so by uh, symmetry, um, 
g must lie on uh, all of the lines uh, vw w u um, sorry nonsense uh, must lie on all of the lines uh, um vn and wp and if you don't really see what I mean by symmetry, just think about that process of doing a problem, doing exactly this logic of showing that you can build up OG out of part of you know, U and a little bit of this M. Um, if you followed exactly the same logic through with these uh, other two expressions, you'd end up with um, part of uh, P and its equivalent, so part of P and W and part of uh, N and um, and then going to so P and W, so M and V and that they must actually work in that way. So we've got to the point where we've deduced that uh, so if by symmetry G must lie on all of the lines and so if it lies on all of the lines it must be at the intersection so therefore G must be at the intersection right part three then it says write down in the form R equals A plus T B an equation of the line through G which is perpendicular to the plane UVW. It is not necessary to simplify the expression for B. Now, so we've got a line. Um, it's going through G. So the first thing we can write down is our vector for G, which we found very early on, which was a third of U plus V plus W, because we know the line's going through that point. And then, um, now, we need a direction for this line. And what we know about this line is it's perpendicular to that plane UVW. So what we need to get a vector that's perpendicular, we need to do a cross product. And we need to cross product two vectors we know to be in the plane. Now, in that plane are um, these vectors here. We can have, it, if we're interested in the plane with this triangle here, then this line here which is uh, W minus U is in that plane, that line there, which is V minus U, and this line here, which is uh, W minus V, these are all in the plane, so I can take any two of those and cross product them to get a vector that's perpendicular to my plane. And so I'm just going to use uh, V minus U and cross product it with a V minus W. Now, it's not strictly the case that you could use sort of any of the three to get it. Um, no, actually you could, no, but I'm just saying it's much better to use V minus W and V minus, uh, V minus U and V minus W because they're both involved that vector V. So you're picking up two vectors that you know you need to get the uh, cross product. Now, so that was simple write down. So we didn't need to simplify it, so we've done that. And um, let's go on to part four, when they actually give us some values for uh, u, v, and w, and ask us to find uh, perpendicular distance from O to the plane. So they're giving us that u equals one, zero, zero, v equals zero, one, zero, and w equals zero, zero, one. So the three unit vectors up from the origin. Now, find perpendicular distance. So what we're going to do is substitute these in and see what happens. See, and uh, actually do let them get a proper equation for the line in terms of these rather than our algebraic version here. So I'm going to get R is equal to one third of, uh, now, U plus V plus W. Add these three two to get three together and you get one, one, one plus t lots of, then um, 
minus 1, 1, 0, well, V minus U, so V minus U gets me the minus 1 there, 1 there, and 0 at the end, crossed with V minus W, which gets me 0, 1, minus 1. Now, I'll work out the cross product of that. Let's just write this down, 1, 1, 1. That's T lots of. Now, the cross product of this is going to be I times minus 1. Uh, minus 1 plus 0, so that's minus 1 there. It's going to be j times uh, minus 1 times minus 1, sorry, 0 times 0 to there, minus minus 1 times minus 1, so it's triple negative, making me minus 1. And finally, k times uh, minus 1 minus 0, which is minus 1. I'll simplify that to uh, use the negative, you know, by dividing t by minus 1, I can simply write this as t111. Now, um, an interesting point here is that this point here um, actually lies, this is, this is a position vector up from the origin, and it lies exactly on the direction vector here. It's a third of, if I set t equal to a third, uh, you can see that uh, we are this actual line that we're looking at here. Um, this is the position vector of g, that g actually lies on this perpendicular from the uh, origin to the plane. Because that's the perpendicular there. So 1, 1, 1. It, sorry, you can't see that. So this vector here is the perpendicular and this point here g is on that perpendicular and so it means that g itself is the point that's closest to the origin from the uh, um, it's, yeah, the point on the plane closest to the origin so I can write this shows that uh, g which is uh, one third of one 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 is on the perpendicular and so is the point closest to the origin. So all we need to do to figure out how far the plane is from the origin is to work out the magnitude of OG there. So OG, um, magnitude of OG is equal to the square root then, well that's the third squared, the third squared, the third squared, plus third squared, plus the third squared, which is equal to root three over nine, which is equal to uh, 1 over root 3, which is the final answer to that question. Thank you very much.